Good morning and welcome to the last in a series of six ACE, APHIS team webinars. I'm John Peterson, a senior advisor of the NCBFAA's Customs Committee, and I thank you for joining us for today's presentation. All attendees are in listen-only mode. However, questions may be submitted by typing them into the question box on the webinar toolbar. Please be sure to use the question box, not the chat box. We will address questions at the end, time permitting. The webinar will also be recorded and posted to both the NCBFAA and the USDA APHIS websites. A link will be sent to all who registered. NCBFAA NEI is excited to be partnering with the APHIS ACE team to present this series of six webinars as we move into the next phase of electronic filing for APHIS core entries. In my office, we've been transmitting the full APHIS core message set on shipments of seeds for planting for a year, and I encourage everyone tuning in today to begin using this data set now if you aren't already. There are well over 40 additional data elements necessary on each line, and the sooner you get started, the better off you and APHIS will be. This webinar focuses on seeds not for planting. As we move through the presentation, each speaker will provide a brief self-introduction, so please make a note of their names and functions. We have a lot to cover, so without further delay, we will start the presentation and turn it over to the APHIS ACE team. Thank you for that introduction. My name is Richard Leshen. On the line is Brett Miller and Vivek Kamath, and we are members of the APHIS ACE team. This presentation describes how to submit APHIS required data for seeds not for planting products within the Department of Homeland Security's Automated Commercial Environment, or ACE. This presentation assumes the viewer has reviewed the first presentation using the Automated Commercial Environment, ACE, to submit import data for APHIS regulated commodities. APHIS regulated seeds not for planting include whole seeds, grain, and nuts, that are imported for purposes other than planting or growing. They also include seeds from plants that are threatened with extinction due to, the, due to trade in those plants or their derivatives. Please note that this presentation will not address specific import admissibility questions, but rather provide general information about import conditions and ACE data entry. Seeds not for planting are regulated by APHIS Plant Protection and Quarantine, which is agency program code ATQ in the APHIS core message set. This slide and the following two slides are diagrams from the APHIS core message set implementation guide. These diagrams, along with others from the guide, may be used for filers to understand the flow of the import data required for seeds not for planting, AP0500, Definitions of the codes may be found in the Appendix PGA, and the technical rules enforcing use of certain codes may be found in the Implementation Guide. This diagram shows the overall PG-10 commodity category and type, PG-14 LPCO, and PG-01 agency processing code for all APQ re regulated commodities. Filers can use this diagram to find the specific business diagrams in the APHIS core PGA message set implementation guide for AP0500 commodities, which are highlighted with the red boxes on this slide. This diagram is one of the two highlighted on the previous slide. This diagram shows the relevant PG06 processing type code PG-10 category codes, PG-10 commodity qualifier and characteristic codes for AP-0500 commodities. It also shows the broad range of choices for commodity qualifier codes. Filers can find this diagram in the APHIS core PGA message set implementation guide. This diagram shows which PG-10 elements should be submitted based on the category code. For example, Fava beans may or may not have a PG06 processing code determined by permit condition. It would be reported with category code 501 seeds not for planting. 
This would be followed by a commodity qualifier of A51 for condition and a characteristic qualifier of WHS for with husk or shell. All of the definitions can be found in the appendix PGA. This slide shows some of the data elements that must be provided in the APHIS Core PGA message set. Please refer to the APHIS Core implementation guide for a list of mandatory data elements that must be entered. Please note, scientific names are required for the AP0500 commodity. When shipment information is entered into the message set, it must include coding, which directs the information to the agency and program unit commissioned for regula with regulatory authority over that commodity. For imports of commodities regulated by APHIS, the government agency code for APHIS is APH. For commodities regulated by plant protection and quarantine within APHIS, the government agency program code is APQ. Many seeds not for planting products are inspected by CBP Agriculture, which is declared using the government agency processing code A01. The PG10 record line is the primary architecture used to help stakeholders correctly report commodities within the APHIS message set. This record line is critical for APHIS message sets because it supports the ability to filter and efficiently align commodities into specific groups. The main data element, commodity category type, is the top level grouping which allows commodities or products to be lumped and or split into specific subgroups using the data elements associated with the commodity categories and the commodity characteristics. Plant protection and quarantine will continue to require and issue import permits. You must continue to submit government certifications as original paper documents for example, phytosanitary certificates and CITES certificates. As mentioned in previous presentation, APHIS PPQ issued seeds not for planting permits have a paperless link to ACE, provided the correct permit information is entered into the PGA message set. Provided the permit matches, filers do not need to submit the, the permit via paper or DIS. Please contact us if you are experiencing issues with the permit match feature. Information contained within the permit may also be of assistance when entering message set data. For example, the commodity name PG17 can be found in the box titled Article Info. LPCO authorized party PG1920 can be found as the permitting name box. Intended use PG01 and any treatment requirements, PG06 and country of origin, PG32, are listed within this document. The import permit type is determined from the requirements listed in the Code of Federal Regulations in regards to specific commodity and associated pests and or pathogens. Numerous regulatory types within the PPQ 587 permit to import plants and plant products can be utilized, which are listed within the CATER document. This example is for fava beans regulated under 7 CFR 319.56. Therefore, the required permit for entry is PPQ 587-56, which has a PG14 type code A19. Please note that additional permit types may be required if the regulated commodity under seeds not for planting is considered to be regulated as a live plant pest, biological control agent, or noxious weed, or is considered a protected plant. While the phytosanitary certificate itself must continue to be submitted in original paper form, the certificate number must be provided in the message set. This is important in order to ensure the correct certificate is attached to the corresponding message set and PPQ permit if required in the ACE system. Please note a phytosanitary certificate is not always required. APHIS regulations will determine if one is required. Having a copy of the phytosanitary certificate will aid in the submission of APHIS core message set. Information required in the message set may be found on certificates that may be found on certificates such as exporter name and address, importer name and address, commodity description, genus, species, treatment type, and country of export.
Here we will walk through a single example of filing APHIS core message set for a seeds not for planting. Many filings will be similar in nature with different commodity information being provided. This walkthrough is from PG line 01 until the end in PG numerical order. This may not be the order in which data is entered into your software. In this example, we will start with soybeans. Soybeans are regulated to prevent the entry of kaffir beetle from certain countries designated by USDA and require the use of a phytosanitary certificate. Soybeans from countries non-endemic to kaffir beetle may be disclaimed B, not regulated per agency guidance, or a minimal message set may be filed to help the inspector in processing the shipment. The filer would report agency code APH for USDA APHIS, program code APQ for plant protection and quarantine, processing code of A01 for CBP agriculture review, and an intended use code of 010.000 to identify the goods as animal feed. In this scenario, the importer identified they will be submitting electronic images for PGA review. All entity and proprietary business is treated as confidential, and as such, that field should always be coded as Y for yes. The PG02 line would be reported as P for product. The PG05 genus and species is identified as glycine max and is required for all seeds not for planting commodities. Primarily, this data element can be found on the phytosanitary certificate permit or will be provided by the importer. In the PG06 line, the filer would identify a source type code, in this case, HRV harvested, with a country code of IN for India. The country of origin may be found on the phytosanitary certificate or permit. For PG-10 commodity characteristic information, a category type code of AP0500 would be used to identify the commodity as a seed not for planting. The category code further breaks this down with code 501, seeds not for planting. For seeds not for planting, there are two qualifier codes. In this case, A51 physical state would be chosen with a characteristic qualifier of BUL or bulk. In this case, the import requires a phytosanitary certificate, type A01, to be reported in the PG13, PG14 lines for LPCOs. The phytosanitary certificate would have a date qualifier 3, which is the date the certificate was signed, and a transaction type 1 for single use. Remember, when entering the phytosanitary certificate number to include all numbers, letters, or special characters. Certificate numbers will be used to match the original paper document with the submitted PGA message set. For the PG-17 wildlife commodity information, APHIS requires only a specific common name, aka vernacular or colloquial name, in this case, soybeans. APHIS requires the reporting of contact and address information for two entities beyond what is found in the CBP header data, previously reported. The ultimate consignee, code UC, the customs broker CB, or importer IM when a broker isn't used. The ultimate consignee is a party in the United States to whom the overseas shipper sold the imported merchandise. If at the time of entry or release, the imported merchandise has not been sold, then the ultimate consignee at the time of entry or release is defined as the party in the U.S to whom the overseas shipper consigned the imported merchandise. If the merchandise has not been sold or consigned to a U.S. party at the time of entry or release, then the ultimate consignee at the time of entry or release is defined as the proprietor of the U.S. premises to which the merchandise is to be delivered. In other words, the party who has been designated on the invoice packing list as the final recipient of the stated merchandise. APHIS also requires the reporting of contact and address information for LPCO authorized party where applicable. The LP, LAP or LPCO local authorized or authorized party varies depending on LPCO type. In general, this is the issued to party or holder of the LPCO. For APHIS permits, 
the local authorized party or the uh, LPCO authorized party is equivalent to the permittee, while certificates generally use the term issued to party. In some instances, certificates have two parties listed. Therefore, the entity who conveyed or requested for or paid for the certificate should be used. PG26 is used to identify the packaging and quantity. In this case, the filer is using one to identify a single packing, packaging and then is reporting that amount in kilograms. If cargo is shipped via container, that information will be reported in PG27. For PG30, the inspection status is I, Product Location for Regulatory Authority Inspection. When reporting I for inspection status, the filer must report the arrival location code as two. The arrival location would be the first port of arrival and would be transmitted as the port code. For PG32 routing information, the shipment did not transit or transship other countries, so a code of 198 would be reported for the original location. For this example, India, IN, would re be reported as the country. Here we will walk through a full version of the previously mentioned faba bean, faba bean example. In this case, the shipment originates from France and is transshipped through Canada. The PG01 line would be reported with agency APH APHIS, Program APQ Plant Protection Quarantine, Government Agency Processing Code A01 for CBP Agriculture, and an intended use of 230.00 for consumer use as human food. Item type was listed as P for product. The scientific name would be reported as Bithia Faba. The PG06 would be reported, report a source type code of HRV for harvested and a country of harvesting FR for France. In this case, the permit lists treatment as a potential condition of trans shipments from other countries. A PG06 processing code of MB001 would show it received a methyl bromide treatment. If available, provide the start and end dates and times for the treatment. For PG10, the category type would be AP0500 to show the shipment is in the season after planting, planting category. The category 501 further categorizes the shipment as a seed not for planting only. Commodity qualifier parameter is A51 for physical state with the characteristic or actual physical state as WHF with, whole, with husk or shells. Report the phytosanitary certificate and permit in the PG 13 14 record line. The PG 17 common specific name is faba bean. The PG 19 20 would need the LPCO authorized party, the ultimate consignee, and reporting of a customs broker or importer if no customs broker is used. PG 26 would report packaging and PG 30 arrival information. For PG32, the line will need to be repeated. First, report 198 start of route, followed by the country it started, France. This shipment is trans-shipping Canada, so PG32 would be repeated with the routing type code of 13 this time for trans-shipment and a country code of CA for Canada. Next, we will walk through an import of coconuts from Costa Rica. The coconut seed consists of the hard-shelled, woody-textured endocarp enclosing the pulp, endosperm, and the liquid, milk or water. The PG01 mine would be reported with agency APH APHIS, Program APQ Plant Protection and Quarantine, Government Agency Processing Code A01 for CBP Agriculture, and an attended use of 230.00 for consumer use as human food. Item type was listed as P for product. The scientific name would be reported as Cocos nucifera, and the PG06 would be re report a source type code of HRV for harvested and a country CR for Costa Rica. For PG10, the category type code would be AP0500 to show the shipment is, the, is the, in the seeds not for planting category type, the category code 501, 
further categorizes the shipment as a seed not for planting only. The commodity qualifier or parameter is A51 for physical state with characteristics or actual physical state as WHM with husks and milk or liquid. Report the phytosanitary certificate in the PG1314 record line. The PG17 common specific name is coconut. The PG19 would need the LPCO authorized party, the ultimate consignee, and reporting of a customs broker or importer. PG26 would report packaging and PG30 arrival information. For PG32, the line would be reported first as 198, start of route, followed by the country it started in, or Costa Rica. On this slide, we show guidance on disc claims when no LPCO is required, but the tariff code flag for AQ1 data may be required. AFIS HTS flagging is based on the tariff code description, including explanatory notes. There may be country or commodity specific restrictions that may not require an LPCO. Tariff code flagging cannot account for country or commodity specific restrictions. If no LPCO is present, and your commodity is flagged AQ1, you may disclaim using code A1, not regulated, sorry, using code A, not regulated, or B, data not required as per PGA guidance. Or you may file a message set with the minimally required data element. It may be beneficial to provide clearing inspecting officers with more granular information. This is especially beneficial if similar commodities require LPCOs depending on country of origin, or if similar commodities appear the same, but regulating, regulating them is dependent on composition, ingredients, intended use, or physical state. Even with disclaims, filers can also submit DIS documents to support a disclaim. If you choose not to file PGA data, example, examples of documents you could provide include country of origin certificate or ingredients list. APHIS core message set questions can be sent to ace.itbs at usda.gov. Please be sure to provide us with screenshots if possible, error codes, and other relevant information. APHIS and CVP have multiple resources available to filers to assist with APHIS core PGA data submission. You can find all these resources on our APHIS ACE website. The APHIS ACE website lists guidance on any exemptions on filing message sets, and entry types where APHIS core flagging is enforced. In addition, the APHIS ACE website links to many CVP ACE appendices. For instance, the DIS implementation guide, Appendix R, and the CVP ACE DIS PGA forms list. APHIS import eligibility questions. Does APHIS require an LPCO for importing commodity X? Should be referred to the specific APHIS program that regulates the commodity. Resources for contacting APHIS regarding such admissibility questions can be found on the APHIS Import Export webpage with links to those you can contact regarding admissibility questions. I will now turn it back over to John Peterson for questions. Thank you, Richard. I don't see any questions right now. Does anybody have any? Uh, there are a few questions that came in. Yeah, John, okay. You might, okay. Yeah, did, yeah you I'm going to scroll up. Okay. Um, let me expand this box. First one I see is the APHIS core and certification or production at this time. The APHIS core message set is live. You can start transmitting now. Yeah. And I can I can echo that. We've been transmitting for over a year and it uh, it works well. I see another one here. We do hope that APHIS and CPFAA will rerun these webinars closer to the implementation date, which is in August. We almost ensure our software vendors are up to date with these APHIS changes. A lot of information to retain, that's true, and use. Not so much a question as a statement, but it's a good one. Yeah. 
Any others? A transshipping example that shows that we would report Canada since the goods were transshipped via Canada. The implementation guide, however, under the PG32 record states APHIS conditions if LPCO indicates transmitting or transshipment countries, then the routing type is required. Is this required only if on the LPCO, as the IG states, or at any time it transits or transships in another country? Brett, did you catch that? Are you able to answer that question? Um, yeah, I think I have at least part of the question. I mean, um, we'll, we can take it back and, 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 and answer it more thoroughly, but, um, I think, you know, in the IG, it says if you have any sort of documentation, LPCOs, license permits, certificates, or other documentation, which includes commercial invoices and et cetera, where you're aware of transshipment, then, um, you should report it. Okay, another question here. If an item is disclaimed, will we receive a may proceed? Um, I believe our, our answer changed from the first presentation. Uh, we reached out to CBP and found out the answer to that question is disclaims do not provide a may proceed. I see another one here which is probably for me, not APHIS, how long does it take for you to fill in on a typical entry? That depends on the number of different types of seed you have. Um, in the case, in my particular case where I'm doing seeds uh, for planting, there are about 45 data elements that are required on every line. The, the the job can be minimized uh, with classification coding software. If you have any kind of dictionary software, um, most of those, about 30 of them, can be pre-coded by the type of seed you're using. But you will still have about 10 or so data elements that have to be manually keyed in on every line. So if you're looking at two or three minutes per line, multiply that by the number of lines in your entry, and you get an idea of how long it will take. I have another question here. Package reporting, for example, bags of 25 kilos should be reported only for the bag or also different levels of packaging, such as bags, cartons, cartons per pallet, et cetera. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. Um, Question is packaging reporting. Uh, if you have bags of 25 kilos, should that be reported only for the bag or also for different levels of packaging? For example, the bags times and the cartons and the cartons per pallet and so on. Um. We may have to take that one back with us, and uh, we will be uh, doing a frequently asked questions document that we'll um, be providing to NCBFA after all the presentations are concluded. I don't know, Brett, can you answer that one, or do we need to take that back? Okay. Um, I, don't I don't recall seeing detail on that at that level in the entries I'm using, so no, I, I guess I'd like to know too. Yeah, so, Mo, um, what we want to see is reflecting of the commercial invoice. So um, we really only, we don't have any restrictions on this particular commodity category. We do on some others for units of measure. Um, but for this one, just the kilograms um, for, the, for the message set line, for each message set line is all we need. And usually that's reflective of your, if you have um, any sort of uh, commercial invoice or certificate that come along with the, the shipment. Um, we do plan to um, improve uh, the, the um, outreach about units of measure in, in the near future. Good. 
another question here, which I think is meant for me. Uh, the same person has uh, said that they meant, how long does it take for me to process a typical entry? Um, I'm not sure how to answer that because there are a number of things that go into the processing of an entry in my office. There are usually two or three people involved. Uh, I, I still think it would be better to just tell you how much additional time is required for the APHIS core a message set on top of what you're already doing for an entry. As I said, that's got to be two or three minutes per entry line. Uh, I would guess um, that the cumulative total going into an entry here is about 15 or 20 minutes of data input once you have all the data elements necessary to input all the, all the lines. But again, two or three minutes per entry line for this additional data. I hope that helps. Um, next question, what condition was noted for determining LTCO requirement on soybeans? In this scenario, it, uh, it was just the country of origin uh, required a, a phytosanitary certificate. Um, but you can go to our uh, APHIS import-export webpage for more information on which commodities require LPCOs, as well as on that webpage, you can find a, a, a link with our contacts, and there is a customer service desk that can help with uh, requirements for import, not a specific requirements, but just import requirements for products. Okay, next question. What is the definition of transshipment? If the shipment remains in the custody of the carrier to the U.S., would that be considered shipped directly to the U.S.? We use the, the CBP definitions, and those can be found in the Appendix PGA. Yeah. So it's... The example I can think of, if you ship something on American President Line, it remains in the custody of that carrier throughout transportation, but it may transship on a different vessel, still in the custody of ATL, but there is a transshipment involved. Let's see. Next question, related to an earlier question, is it acceptable to report routing type 198 original location with the country of origin for all entries? For instance, if we are submitting an entry with country of origin NL shipping from Canada to the US, can we report routing type 198 and NL for the associated country codes? Didn't catch the uh, the end of the uh, the statement. It, can you kind of repeat the latter half of that the example? So I'm saying, did you want me to reread the question, or are you going to take it back? Just the example. If you could reread the example, he the person provided. Now it says, for instance, if we are submitting an entry with the country of origin NL shipping from Canada to the U.S., can we report routing type 198 and NL for the associated country codes? Well, 198 would be the original country the commodity moved from, where routing to the U.S. began. So 198 would be where the routing to the U.S. began, and then you would then subsequently report any countries that is transiting or transshipping. Okay, so the origin isn't, this isn't relevant to the transshipping issue, at least in this case. Um, next question. 
Do Stephanie seeds require filing a PGA or could we just claim this AQ1? Um, looks like the question isn't complete, but does, do Sesame seeds require filing of a PGA or could we just claim? I, looks to me like they require, it depends on their intended use. Uh, it would also Mr. depend Dempsey. upon whether or not it needs an LPCO. If it needs a license, yes. a permit, certificate, or other document uh, necessary for its importation, then you would have to provide a PGA message set. If no document is required for their for entry, then you would have to, then you could disclaim. But you would need to find out uh, again from the the experts on the importation. Um, and I, I lay that out with the import export website and the customer service hotline, whether or not it does require a permit certificate or other document for its importation. I see another question here. I think it's incomplete. Um, this person has written in, I believe there are two codes, one, three, and a transshipment 49 for transit country. I'm not sure what they're trying to say. Correct, there are 13, in the PG32 commodity routing type codes, there's a 13 place of transshipment, place where goods are to be or have been transferred from one means of transport to another during the course of one transport operation, or 49 transit country, country which a which goods are routed between the country of original departure and the final destination. Those are the two commodity routing type codes used beyond the 198 original location. Okay, great. Uh, next question, uh, asking do ryegrass seeds fall into this scenario? Probably another LPCO issue, right? Correct, as well as their intended use. Um, these are this this presentation was seeds not for planting, and you can find uh, plants for planting, which is where seeds for planting are also found uh, on our website. The webinar was presented, uh, I believe, last week. Okay. Uh, next question: How should PG32 be reported if the country of origin and country of export are different? Is it the expectation that multiple routing types are transmitted in scenarios such as this? Brett, can you can you pick up on that one? I think that one might be better if it, we have it written down and we respond to that one. Um, but but in general. You know, PG06 is country of origin, and then PG32 is documenting the route it took. Um, but if we need to get a little bit more into the weeds, I think we can answer that one offline. Okay, I can. Uh, I've had numerous examples where there are multiple countries of origin on an invoice, but the country of export is different than all of those countries of origin. So it's in our software, it's pretty obvious how those should be reported. Uh, it, it would be good to have an answer from you, so we'll, we'll look into that. Um, that was the last question. Um, so unless anybody has any others, I think we're finished. So that concludes today's webinar. And this is the final webinar in the series. Thank you all for joining, and thank you especially to the ASIS AIDS team for putting together today's webinar, as well as the previous sessions. NCBFA will be sending a PDF copy of today's presentation shortly.